Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. I cannot believe it is December 1st. Can you believe it is December 1st? So much holiday season is approaching. Um, I am a huge fan of Christmas. I love giving presents. So this is really like my favorite time of year. I love buying things for people and watching them open it. It's like one of my favorite things ever. Um, I get to see my family at the end of the month, so that is always super exciting. So I hope you guys have really great plans for the next month or so, and you're staying warm and getting lots of reading done. First, I do want to say that I am not going to be doing Vlogmas. I have all respect to the people who do Vlogmas, but this is still my first year, and I don't think I'm quite ready <laughs> to try to attempt a video every single day. But I am going to try to pick up my content a little bit in December and give you more videos in a week. I normally give you two. Um, I'll try to do more than two videos a week. But I don't think I can do one every day. But I will be enjoying everyone who's doing Vlogmas and um, sitting in awe of them doing a video every single day. What am I doing today? Today I'm coming to you with a Christmas suggestion list or a Russell's Christmas Guide. Let's call it that, Russell's Christmas Guide. Um, and I'm going to try to give you a bunch of different options for a bunch of different types of people. Um, so without further ado, I got a lot of piles of stuff here that I wanna talk about. So first I wanna talk about the littlest ones in our life and the books that I am giving actually to my nieces and nephews that I think would be great great gifts for you guys. And one kind of goes without saying, you will not be surprised to see, and that is Franklin's Flying Bookshop by Jen Campbell and Katie Hartnett. You guys know how much I love this. It's now available both in the United States, the UK, I believe it's available actually worldwide. Um, and it is fantastic and it is amazing. And this is just an aside, if you go to Jen Campbell's uh, page, and uh, she will send you one uh, signed to whoever you're giving it to. So this one right here for me is going to my nephew Joseph. And as you can see, Jen made a super nice note to him right there. And I can't highly recommend this enough, but you guys have heard me talk about it. So I would recommend Flying Franklin's Flying Bookshop. But I did want to recommend another book too that I'm giving out this year to my nieces and nephews, and that's The Little Lemon That Leapt. And this is a very cute story by a mother and daughter team, um, uh, Karen Sanders Betts and Hannah Howerton. And this is the story of a little lemon who's in a tree and decides he doesn't want to be part of the tree, so he leaps out. And he goes around the world meeting people that are different, different animals. He meets a ballerina buffalo and a bunch of different um, animals doing things that is outside what he would normally expect. And he thinks, well, that's weird, you're weird. And it's not until he starts to understand that weirdness is what makes us unique and special and that he himself is different than every other lemon that is on the tree, that he comes to learn the lesson to appreciate and to um, really champion people's differences. And the artwork is super adorable. And what's really cool, like for example, this is a sloth climbing a mountain. Um, you can actually go to their website, which I will try to link below, and they have merchandise. Um, I met them at a uh, Bay Area book festival, and they are super great. So that's The Little Lemon That Leapt by Karen Sanders Betts and Hannah Howerton. The next book I'm going to go into is Middle Grade, and I'm going to have to put a picture here because, again, someone has my copy, and that is Wonder by R.J. Palacios. Now, if you guys have not read this book as an adult, I highly recommend that you do. It is fantastic, but it is a middle grade book. It is about a little boy who is born with a facial deformity, and until he is, I think, six or seven, don't quote me, it's been a while since I read it, um, he is homeschooled, and at the start of the book, he's going to go to school for the first time. It is a novel about differences. It's a novel about acceptance. It's a novel about looking past um, your preconceived notions and getting to know people and creating friendships. It is about friendship, and it is about family, and it is phenomenal. Now, a movie just came out based on this book, and I have not seen it. I probably will, but this book like sits right in my heart. It's one of my favorite middle grade books I've ever read, so it's going to be hard for me to want to go see the movie version, but if you, I'm really telling you, if you have a middle grade reader, um, Wonder by R.J. Palacios is freaking fantastic. So definitely recommend it. 
The next one I'm going to recommend for your middle grade reader is The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. And this was, this won the Newbery Medal for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children, which I just like to say that whole thing. And this is definitely a middle grade book with heart. This is about Ivan. He is a gorilla and he has an artistic soul. And his best friends are an old um, elephant and a stray dog, but he's very, he looks at the world from an artistic point of view. And all of a sudden there is a baby elephant that is abandoned that arrives that changes his view of the world. This is a sweet book. You could read it with your middle grade reader and they would really enjoy it. I promise you. That's The One and Only Ivan by Kathleen Applegate. Moving into your YA readers, I have three options, and one is going to be no surprise. It's going to be no surprise. So I really say if you have a middle, uh, a YA reader, and you don't get them Moxie by Jennifer Matthew, you're really missing out. Boys, girls, um, non-binary, whatever your child is, they need to read this book. And this book is obviously the story of a young girl in a Texas high school. Um, I have a whole review video, which I will link below, but she decides that she's tired of the sexism that is her school, and she creates a club called Moxie. And she does it um, in secret. No one knows that it's her um, at the start. And it is fantastic, and it is powerful, and it is amazing, and... I think you should give it for every, well, every boy, girl, as I said, anyone should read this book. It is that amazing. And Jennifer Matthew is actually a teacher. And if you follow her on Twitter, she's just great. So I really recommend this one. The next one I'm going to recommend is Every Day by David Leviathan. Now, this is a different type of book, um, and one I don't think I've even mentioned David Leviathan um, on my channel before, but he is definitely, um, there was a movie out a few um maybe a couple years ago, called Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. That was based on a book that he wrote. I have some weird glare going on this because there's this big sun on this picture. So um, this is the story of, what is the character's name? Um, I think she, he goes by A. Um, and every day this person wakes up in a different body and has to learn about that person and be that person for a day and it's about identity it's about learning about different socioeconomic groups different experiences different sexualities as you jump from body to body um it's not perfect but it is definitely a book worth reading it gives a perspective that you probably have not seen in ya literature before and i really enjoyed it for what it was and that was every day by david leviathan now, a graphic novel rep, um, recommendation for your, I, I think this could be YA or middle grade, and that is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the um, graphic novel interpretation by Eric Sanauer and Scotty Young. And this is just as it is. It's a graphic novel representation of The Wizard of Oz, but it is so fun and it is so beautifully drawn, you guys. And it has, they've done the entire Wizard of Oz series. It's a whole entire set. They're hardback, they're gorgeous. And it's super fun to revisit. People don't realize that the movie Wizard of Oz is very different than the book Wizard of Oz. Um, and it is beautiful. And I highly recommend it, even if you're an adult, I think you'd really like this. I really enjoyed reading them um, as I started to collect them. That's, so that's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the graphic novel version by Eric Shanauer and Scotty Young based on Al Frank Baum's books. Okay, getting into the adults. If you have an adult in your life that is looking for a book that is um, science fiction or fantasy in nature, I have one old school recommendation and one new recommendation. The old school recommendation, really, uh, probably a lot of people have read, is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This is an homage. It's a futuristic story that's an homage to the 80s, has a lot of references to 80s. Um, I don't even know what I'm, I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of. Um, but it definitely references video games, TV shows, music from the 80s. Um, it is super fun. It's about a little boy and... Well, actually, it's about a world where a man has created a VR world where people escape into. He dies, and in that world, he says that he has hidden a golden egg, I believe, and if you find it, you inherit his world. 
for his, his company and his world. And it's about a group of friends who go into the world to try to find it together. They have to solve these puzzles, which um, kind of move you through the plot. Um, and it is just, it's super fun. It's super exciting. If you have someone who is an audiobook reader, um, Will Wheaton from Star Trek fame and now on Big Bang Theory reads the audiobook. It's excellent as well. Um, a lot of people have read it, but just in case you have that one person out there and it's about to be a movie next year with, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. So super fun. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. If you are looking for that fairy tale fantasy book for someone, I highly recommend The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Now, this is a Russian fairy tale retelling of a family that lives in the wilderness of Russia. Um, and how do you explain this? Um, the mother has sort of a magical um, history in her family. She bears a final daughter and she passes away and she passes on that magic to her daughter. Her daughter can see the spirits that exist in the world around. Um, it's the story of a new mom who comes in, a stepmother who is really, really religious and cuts out sort of what she considers these pagan rituals and how that affects the world around. Um, there is magic, there are, there's death and there's um, evil and our in our incarnations of them. It's about a girl who is really going to save the people she loves and the town she lives in. It's about being strong when you are scared and it is very atmospheric. You will definitely feel cold. Um, it's very much set in Russia in the snow and it's just, she does a great job of um, creating an atmosphere. Um, I will say in the beginning, I was a little bit confused, so it takes a minute to get into, um, but it's definitely worth getting through. And the second book is coming out very, very soon. And that's The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And it's fun for any of your fantasy readers. I'm going to try to talk faster because I still don't want this video to be forever long. If you are looking for someone who is just looking for a, a very solid, literary, amazing book um, with a bit of, um, you know how I am. I love my older women protagonists. I have two recommendations in that. And one, again, you're not going to be surprised to see Lillian Boxfist Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. Um, this is the story of a woman in the 50s who, um, I'm sorry, even earlier than that, she becomes a major person in a... Um, marketing for Macy's. She, it's about marriage. It's about love. It's about the decisions women had to make in that time frame when they had a family. It's about artistic expression. It's about this woman who is 80, 85. I can't remember. It happens on the year of 1984 to 1985. And um, what happens, it happens on New Year's Eve. She's walking her, to her restaurant and it's about reflection. It's about her family. It is so good. You know, I've talked about this book a ton, so I don't really have to talk about it a lot, but um, I really love it and you really should read it. The next book is Celine by Peter Heller. This is if you want someone who wants a little bit of a mystery in their life. And this is the story of Celine. She's a private eye who has been hired. She's in her 60s. She's been hired by a woman to find out why her father is missing. It takes you all through um, uh, Colorado, um, Wyoming, that sort of part of the country. She gets in an RV and she drives with her husband, who's kind of her Watson. It's about... Um, the relationship that these two have that is fantastic. Sorry, I had a little bit of a mind blank there because I'm trying not to give too much away, but she has been hired by a girl whose father went missing when she was young and she doesn't believe he's gone. So she, Celine, starts searching for that. It's also about the different parts of her past. You get flashbacks on how she became who she is. It is really good. Peter Heller is a fantastic writer and Celine, I believe, is his best book. I really think if you like a mystery and you like a literary mystery, this is the type of book for you. My pile over here is getting really big. Okay, two literary things for people who want to get lost in place and people who want to get lost in a saga. You're not going to be surprised to see Florence and Esky, but Ecstasy by Jesse Chaffee, are you? I don't think you are. If you want someone who wants a book that is literary and meaty, but also will just, just take you to Florence, Italy, will take you to a place... This is the book for you. This is the story of Hannah who goes to Florence to deal with an eating disorder. It's about how she reinvents herself. It's about how she takes the history of Florence, the 
um, saints, the women saints, and some of the stuff that they went through. It has an amazing story about rebirth as a person as you try to figure out who you are and deal with something that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life. It is fantastic, and I highly recommend it if you have a more literary reader who wants something a little more chunky for Christmas. That is Florence and Ecstasy by Jesse Chaffee. Um, this book is going to be in my wrap-up that's coming in the next couple days, but that is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I finally read it. Can you believe it? Um, I have lots to say. It is excellent, but if you like people who want to get involved in a saga that just takes you through the history of a family, this is the book for you. This is the story of Sunja, who um, is in a love affair at the beginning. She thinks she's going to marry a man, and it turns out that that doesn't happen. She gets pregnant, and she is... Um, married to a preacher or a pastor who is coming through and on his way to Japan. She lives in Korea. He marries her. He has tuberculosis and gets sick and she helps him recover. So she marries him and um, they move to Japan. It's about the family growing up in Japan. It's about the socio, um, it's not the socioeconomic, that's not what I want to say. It's about the way society in Japan treats what they consider foreigners. All of her children are born in Japan, but they are um, not considered Japanese because of the fact that they came from Korea. It goes through her, it goes through her children and their grandchildren. It is enveloping. You will love a lot of it. It will break your heart. But if you like or have someone in your family who likes these family sagas, this book is for you. Okay, a couple more things. Gosh, this video is getting long. For the history lover in your life, one old, one new. If, you got, if the history lover in your life has not read The Founding Brothers by Ra uh, Joseph J. Ellis, really missing out. This is actually nonfiction, and it is kind of like four short stories that talks about different interactions between the Founding Fathers, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr are in here, George Washington, John Adams, the Jefferson. Um, it is really easily told, but it gives a lot of information. It won the Pulitzer, I want to say. I think it won the Pulitzer. Um, and it is really, really well done. If you have someone in your life who just likes early American history, Founding Brothers by Joseph Ellis. If you have someone who likes history but wants it in a little different way, I highly recommend the graphic novel series March by John William, I'm sorry, John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. Again, this is the story of the life of John Lewis. He is currently a U.S. representative in the House of Representatives. He was very involved in the civil rights movement. This is about the civil rights movement in Alabama, Tennessee, across the United States. It's about the segregation. It's about um, the voting rights. It is about the horrible, horrible things that African-American people um, had to deal with and still deal with. Um, it starts on the day Obama is um, uh, sworn into office as president, something John Lewis never thought would happen. And it is powerful and amazing. It is three volumes. This is the three volume collection um, and it is worth it. And if they like really amazing history, but with great art and great storytelling. I highly recommend March by John Lewis. Last two things, and these are um, subscription services. If you're looking for something to give that's a subscription service. The first one is very inexpensive, and that is One Story. I will link them below. One Story for, I think it's $15. They will send you one short story a month. And what's great about it is they never repeat authors and they never repeat stories. So the same author never has a second story. So every month you are introduced to a new author and a new story. And it just comes like this in a little envelope. It's nothing, um, nothing fancy, but it is fantastic because it will introduce you to amazing writers. It's not expensive. And if if you like them, you can go and search them out on what they can do. And it's really, really, really good. And so that's one story. And it's actually edited by Hannah Tinty, who wrote The Twelve Lives of Samuel Hawley, which is a book that I really love this year. And last but not least, I can't not mention Page Habit. I really think, you guys, if you have a reader in your life that likes to get a present and have a book, and it's really exciting because the book that they get comes 
um, noted by the author, and it's just super fun to get a present. Now, you can get this sent to you every quarter or every month. It is, I think, $24 a month is what I pay, um, but that comes with a hardback and a bunch of fun stuff. I'm going to do a box uh, unboxing video of this in the next couple days as well. Um, I've gotten some amazing books that I hadn't even had on my radar that I'm super excited about, um, and it's just sort of a personal touch, and I will link them below, Page Habit. They, um, they really do a very, very very, very nice job. And that's a kind of a fun subscription service if you have a bit more money or if you want to do it quarterly. You know, you don't have to do it every month as well. So I hope that gives you a bunch of ideas for Christmas. This video is now 20 minutes long and I am sorry for that. Do you guys have anything that you would recommend for Christmas for people that are readers? Let's give people ideas below. I would really appreciate it. Um, have you read any of these and would you recommend them as gifts for other people as well? Um, as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I hope you like this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you. Until next time, happy reading and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!